United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. This is the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors meeting at the Mitchell County Courthouse. It is Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. In front of us, we have an agenda. Is there any changes or issues with that agenda? If not, do we have any motions to approve? Move to approve. Jim has made a motion to approve. I'll second. Mike has second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Approve the minutes of Sep September 28th meeting. So hopefully everybody has looked through and is there any issues, changes, modifications to that last week's minutes? Hearing none, do we have any motions to approve the September 28th meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Mark has made a motion. I'll second. Todd has seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. Steve. Aye. Aye. Jim. Aye. Todd. Aye. That has been approved. Moving on. County Attorney General discussion. Mark? Yeah. Do you have anything for us today? I don't have anything unless you have some questions. Okay. I don't see anybody squirming around in the chair. So thank you, Mark. I'll try and visit you Friday morning if you're going to be around. I should be. All right. I will catch you then. Thank you. Moving on. Sheriff update. Uh, very briefly. Still on track for tomorrow morning um, with our active shooter training. So I'll be present in the morning and then again uh, for the afternoon session. May not be here for the whole 15 hours or whatever. I'll be in and out uh, for those trainings. I think everybody that's going to attend is going to be impacted. It's pretty, 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 pretty intense. Um, can do photos today for the department. Can I steal your Iowa flag for a period of time and then bring it back this afternoon when we're completed? It's yeah. yours. Outside photos, so come down and wonder where it went. I've got it. Thank <laughs> you for that. I'll bring it right back when we're done. Um, other than that, I guess I don't have anything. We're good over there. Um, Does anybody have anything? Question for the sheriff? We no. have just one more side note, I guess. Part time people looking for full time jobs in it. Thank you. Moving on, number five, department head discussion. And I don't believe we have anybody out there that's, I don't hear anybody saying anything, so I don't believe there's anything today for department head discussion. And, uh, Move down to county engineer update. Morning. <clears throat> Morning, Rich. Um, the Underwood Bridge up there by Bailey. Um, they got the back wall stripped. Sounds like they're going to do some backfilling, and then Monday they want to set the beams. So that's nice progress up there. Once they set the beams, they'll have to uh, get some formwork done and cast the more of the paving notch or the, I can't remember what you call it now, the <coughs> concrete between the beams, the one side's the anchored abutment, the other side slides. So they got some concrete work yet and then they'll start decking it. Um, don't know the timeline on that for sure. Um, the one on Balsam Avenue, that tide bridge with Worth County, it sounds like the crew that's in Worth County now is gonna come to work on the Balsam Bridge, which is probably three to four weeks yet before they mobilize and they've got about two weeks left in Worth County and then they'll, they're going to bring that same crew over. 
So um, they got, I don't know, they, there was a, a, a week or so in there that they were going to be doing something else and then they'll mobilize, mobilize in. So hopefully, I want to check with them first to make sure that they're not going to keep that road closed for the winter. I don't want that to happen. No. And I think there's still time to get stuff done before the snow flies, but, you know, we're talking late October to, to demo that bridge. And it's a, sh it's a short bridge, it's a slab bridge, so maybe it'll go faster than the one we're having in North County, but you just never know. So I'll have to talk, talk to the contractor about that one. Um, last night, somebody left an oil slick on 350th over by Valent, so I struggled to find out what to do. This was late in, or early in the evening, and so we put some barricades up. We're putting a, a sander on one of the trucks, and we're going to get some screenings and spread some screenings on the road to kind of help absorb it. It sounds like I talked to uh, the city this morning too, Jerry, and if we have to, I, Chris Olson was involved last night and he called the DNR. I checked it this morning. It's not super slick, but it's slick enough that we should probably do something. And I don't know how to put floor dry down with a dump truck or where to even find <laughs> that volume. So we, I called the quarry this morning and asked him if you know, uh, lime would probably absorb it, but I don't know we can get it through our spreaders, so we're going to use kind of a screenings and see if that doesn't spread it. And then it sounds like they're going to start hauling um, some of the product out of Valent for spreading on fields, so they'll really pound it in anyway. So maybe by the next few days there won't be much left to broom off if the DNR requires us to sweep it off. I talked to the city. They said they would come out and use their street sweeper to sweep it up at least and pile it so we can haul it somewhere. But re I don't know anything about anything else yet. It... It's not super bad on the Orchard Road. It went from Orchard Road all the way to Valent, so it's that whole half mile in there on the, kind of ran down the center line for a while and then it ended up on the westbound lane mostly. So um, we'll see if it, I, I think it'll absorb what we need to, but. Any indication as to what this is, is it from a blowed engine or does somebody have a hole in an oil barrel? And we just think it's a hydraulic line hydraulic. Um, from something. I was texted last night by an individual that showed me all these pictures, and I'm like, well, what do you want me to do about it? You know who did it, you know, and nobody knows who did it, so I called the comp center right away and got Chris involved. And so we'll just spread some screenings and see how long it takes. It, it's not super slick, but it's still not safe. So we'll get that taken care of. That sounds like something that happened with the old gray doll every once in a while. Well. They spread it about five or six feet wide for a half a mile, so there wasn't much left in the tank, I wouldn't think. Mm. That's a lot. Of, that's, that's a lot, lot of oil. Yeah, so. Anyway, uh, we'll take care of that. So um, I'm going to have a meeting with WHPS late this morning and uh, talk about some of the projects we have. Of course, Kirk wouldn't agree on that list, so we'll get some estimates figured out so we can get some numbers and budgeting stuff figured out so we can get these projects moving. So. Um, the other thing we have on the agenda is the 2080 agreement between Cerro Gordo County and Mitchell County. It really only affects <coughs> not even a mile of road, but uh, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to review it or not. In summary, um, it basically just defines who's responsible for what with construction costs. The 2080 agreement just kind of says we have an agreement. Um, construction projects on any of these sections of road, which is just one section of road, will be on an individual basis and cost split 50-50. Um, routine maintenance is anything we consider routine. When we put granular surfacing down or ditch cleaning or anything like that. Then they've got major major maintenance, which I would, they also put in resurfacing, but we've kind of discussed that it's more of a upgrade, regrade type situation versus just putting rock on the road. So, I mean, it's got costs involved. If it costs more than 5,000 a mile on some of that stuff, then we split the costs or $10,000 per bridge or culvert repair. I haven't looked at the road. I mean, like I said, it's probably, I don't even know, it's a, the map's kind of small, so I couldn't tell if it was even a mile's worth of, it's a half a mile worth of road. So there's really not a whole lot for us to be responsible for, and on their end, it's only a mile. So we're talking a whole total of a mile and a half. They're making us responsible for any bridges. I don't think there's any bridges on that stretch of ours and theirs. I don't think there's a bridge on there. So um, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, something we've been probably doing for the last 50 years and never really had a document that was recorded. So they're just doing this so we can get it recorded with the state. So I don't see any issues with what's going on here. The costs, you know, seem pretty simple. We are, the one thing they do, to, that do, however, add to it and 
we've kind of gone back and forth with this between counties before is who's responsible for driveways and what this defines is if the driveway is on the Cerro Gordo County side that Cerro Gordo would use their ordinances and policies to have the driveway put in and if it's on Mitchell County side regardless of who's in charge of maintenance that the county that has the driveway on it would be in charge of, of the procedures so. so my recommendation would be to accept it and sign it All righty. Um, well, if uh, Rich has given us his approval, do we have any motions to um, sign this 28 agreement with uh, Sarah Gordo County? I'll move to sign the agreement with Sarah Gordo County. Okay, Mike has made a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Mark has second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Todd. Aye. Jim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mark. Aye. Mark. Sorry, Mike. Aye. I've got distracted. <laughs> yeah, it has a nice song. way to act. Yeah. Kind of caught me <laughs> off guard there, too. So we have approved. The 28 e agreement with Sarah Gordo and I just put my John Henry on there I'll let you fill in all yep. the rest and I, and I only see one spot here yep. for my name so thank you rich so right. there you go. that's all I've got for you this morning do we have any questions for rich on anything else for we're probably mostly done with some road regrades this year with harvest going on but we've got the excavators out well we will have the both of them out right now we're doing some other things but we'll try to get some silt taken care of and some box culverts and things like that kind of straighten some things out for winter so we'll still be doing some digging i stopped in the shop yesterday and i heard you got an oil bath yeah is it better for the skin or what it, yeah, there we go. At least I had rag clothes on. Um, I see you're putting in a new furnace. That's that oil burner. Yep. yep. Did that. Looks like it's a lot bigger than the old one. Does it have more BTUs? Will it I use more? I don't know. I think they, we had somebody come in and size it for us, and it's going to replace the old junker that's in there. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The big devil. Well, once we got the new, the new oil burner in there and the, the air exchanger, we ought to be doing pretty good. New roof a couple of years ago and should be pretty efficient again. Yeah. Well, all righty. Thank you, Rich. All right. Have a good week. Yes, you too. You too. Uh, moving on down, discussion and possible action on Mitchell County Economic Development Corp's new incentive program. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I am coming to you on behalf of the MCEDC office today. Today I'm asking for $100,000 to start an infill lot incentive program right here in Mitchell County. We know that there's a housing shortage here in Mitchell County as evidenced when talking with our local citizens and industry leaders. This program will benefit several entities of Mitchell County from demo and excavation companies, contractors, investors, homeowners, potential residents, schools, cities, and especially the county. Only one city has a demo incentive, but it isn't much. This would incentivize each community to clean up abandoned homes as well as build new homes for families moving to Mitchell County. New homes built will recoup the cost of property taxes over an abandoned home. So some advantages to this are cleaning up um, derelict properties, ensure new affordable homes are constructed in our communities, incentivize builders to build without having to the burden of demolition costs, increase property value to the local neighborhoods. Any community within Mitchell County can use this program. Workers coming to the area to fill jobs will now have a home to move into in Mitchell County. The criteria for this program would be the landowner must be the applicant for this program of an infill lot. 
The program will pay a local demolition or excavation company up to $10,000 to bulldoze a vacant home on the lot. So this program would provide us, the $100,000 would provide us roughly 10 um, infill lots throughout Mitchell County. Construction of a new home must be started within one year of acceptance into the program. Construction must be completed within two years or the landowner pays the county back the demolition cost. New built-in, or I'm sorry, no built-in criteria prohibiting additional help from a city. For example, if the demolition cost of a home was 12,500, a landowner could go back to their city and ask the city to cover the additional $2,500. Um, I would like the program to start on 1-1 of 22 in time for spring construction. What questions do you have for me? Keith, describe landowner. What if this is a derelict property that has been recovered by the city? Is the city then the landowner? The city eligible for this grant? Correct. The city would be the landowner. We would not be paying the city, we would be paying the demolition company. So the landowner then would have to reach out to a local demolition or excavation company to bulldoze the home, and then we, the county, would then pay the company for the demolition cost up to $10,000. Has, has any of the other cities offered to pay part of the demolition cost? The cities that I've talked to so far, only Osage has an incentive of $750. Um, when I talked to the Osage City Council members, they did say that that should be reevaluated. It would be nice to be able to help. Um, the cities that I've talked to, the city clerks that I've talked to in Osage, Riceville, St. Ansgar, and Stacyville have all said that they would definitely be willing to, um, if the county is willing to come in and donate up to ten thousand dollars pay up to ten thousand dollars for this program they would definitely be willing to look at additional costs for a demolition shannon there would be no other there'd be no built-in criteria as far as if someone wanted to use several programs to cover the cost of demolition this would just be the county providing up to ten thousand dollars to demo to demo a home. Nope. They they aren't available. They aren't able to use both, are they? They would be able to unless the other, unless for instance, the DNR had criteria built into their program stating that they could not double dip. Essentially, because that is double dipping. You know, if you use yeah. one, you no, shouldn't be. Not, Correct, but not be able to use both. Yeah, double dipping is when you double dip in the same pot. This is, this would be but it's still, you're getting, <clears throat> to me, that isn't right if you're getting both. Keith. Wouldn't uh, the answer to that be that anything over the cost of 10000 from another entity? Correct. You know, if it's going to cost $30,000 in the building, they can certainly look for DNR or help from the city. Or Correct. This would just be incentivizing taking down abandoned homes to build new construction homes within the county so that we can have new properties available to new homeowners coming to the area. We know there's a shortage when it comes to workforce. We can't bring workers in and have them come in, fill these jobs, and live and work in Mitchell County if we don't have the homes for them. So this, to me, is step one, being able to help incentivize taking care of some of the land prep for our builders so that they don't have to go in the hole to use demolition costs. This would be the county's way of saying, we will come in and help you take care of some of the demolition costs up to $10,000. Beyond that, it's up to the landowner. Built-in criteria that a home must be built on that lot. So we're not gonna just go in, clear out someone's sheds and, and make a nice big beautiful land or yard for them. A home does have to be built or they would be responsible to pay back the demolition costs to the county. And this would be covered in the rural areas too, correct? Yep, it could be anywhere. Do you know what the DNR program is? No, um, DNR program I know is not for county at large. It was um, I know the city of Rockford 
for the city? So, uh, so the building off of 23 and then that's Okay. <coughs> Would that be the same as what we tried to get for at the county home? Is that the same program? I got it in the county. For the United City Limits. Oh, the entire city. I looked at that, but I guess I can't answer that. I don't remember what all the details were. <coughs> Some of that had to do with uh, repurposing the. the the bricks so that you didn't put so much in the Correct. Rack. You yeah, had to you re utilize of, some of the bunch of things involved with it. There would be recycling, yeah. I should say. <coughs> I, I have a question. I don't know if, if this would go. Mm -hmm. Do we need, since your economic development is a non profit organization, does it have to have a 2080 agreement before it can even be done? That'd nope. be a county attorney, I guess, question. That's true, but um, no, the way that I understand it, we would just be the um, managers of the program. We would use the county attorney to draw up the legal paperwork and the parameters as far as paying it back if a home isn't built within the set criteria. Um, and then what would happen is we would then go through the auditor's office to pay the demolition company okay, so after. Yep, they would have to be pre-approved and we okay, would continue with all the paperwork and documentation of that. And then the county attorney, or I'm sorry, <laughs> auditor, would go ahead and and write that check yeah, to the company. I was that, thinking, you know, like, yep. if the money got transferred to you guys and you guys divvied it out, then it's a it's a donation to. Yeah, no, we would like to take ourselves out of the money portion of that and just be the program supervisors for this. Okay. Yep. Yep. Take all the paperwork off of all yeah, of I'm you. Just trying to make sure it's done right. You yep, know. definitely. Any idea how much it costs to tear down houses? Yep. So when I spoke with local um, demolition companies, they said $10,000 should, on average, it depends so much based on the home and all sorts Size. of varying costs, but they said that should cover at least 90, up to 90% <clears throat> of a demolition cost. So we're still not giving them 100%. Um, you may be able to get a demolition done for 10000 or less, but this would cover a very high majority of that cost, so up to about 90%. What if, what if you have an acreage with a bad house, bad buildings? Can you get rid of it all? or You would just have $10,000 to tear yeah. it down with the criteria that you then but build you, a home right. in that spot. But you could spot. get rid of the buildings with that $10,000 yep. too? It's yep, you could as question. long as you put a home back up yeah. on that property. Because yep. the so construction company that's going to tear it down, they're going to know that... Um, this is part of the program and mm -hmm. you bring them in and take the house down and in this building and that building it's there it's going to be on the homeowner or the property owner to fill in what's left after ten right. thousand because they, they know that they they'll send a bill for and that's all that the county was is gonna now, if you help compare it to the county home though that was demolished for a lot less than 10,000 yep. and that was the biggest mm -hmm. four houses probably you know yep and we would pay the um the invoice from the demolition so, company so okay. if it's eight thousand dollars it's yeah. eight thousand yeah. dollars you don't get just ten thousand dollars because yeah. that's what you were approved for up to ten thousand dollars I think you get it done for a lot less when you compare it to that building you know yep. yeah. well you know, I think cost done that is also kind of a donation helping us out I think also I, they didn't say that but I don't know you but know, they buried that on site where houses are going to have to haul it away and yeah, that'd be the that's, that's the point there. Well, not if you get the fire department to burn them down and then there ain't much left to bury, you know? In the country, but in yeah, town. Oh, oh, yeah, in town. Yeah, you'd have to haul it away in town. Keith, Keith. this would include only this demolishing the house and removal of material, no backfill or shaping or anything like that, correct? Right? Correct. Would be up to ten thousand dollars, whatever you could get. You can negotiate something with um, an excavation company, however you want. You would pay that that company. That'd probably be part of the site preparation, though. So I don't know where you draw the line there. Mm -hmm. But they'll just put it. The house is ten thousand dollars, and then add the backfill and stuff, they'll just put that in their $10,000 bill. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. 
so it would be part of the site preparation, really. You know, I mean, if you needed it, it took to. eight thousand to <coughs> tear the house down and remove the rubble. They had two thousand dollars left to take to use for prepping for a new home. Is that what you're saying? And that would have to be built into the application and approved, pre-approved by our office. Yep. Is that something that you would approve? Up to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I think that the land prep. Yes. As much as we can do up to 10000 for the land prep in order to put a new home on it because we need those new home constructions. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is we want to get a new home put up. Yeah, period. the end goal is that we need to have... Um, the neighbors want new home yeah. instead of the... Exactly. The you're, not just clearing a, you're not just clearing a lot next to you so that you have a nice, bigger yard. No. Nope. A home has to go back up on so it. So there's future property tax yep. can be generated because of it. Would it, would it be first come, first serve, or so much designated each area of the county, or how would that? It would be first come, first serve, um, but I think that our office would definitely kind of keep an eye on if we have eight properties, say, in Osage, we would yeah. try and kind of spread the wealth as you would a little bit, yes. I would like to see every community within our county utilize this. Every community um, in our county has at least one infill lot. Some communities, some of our larger communities, have upwards of three to five currently at this time. How, how are you going to get the message out to everybody? So we would use our social media platform. Um, we have a brand new website that is ready to launch any day now. Okay. So that would also be a program that we would have featured on our website and okay. push that information out as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we definitely want to get the word out, and that's why I thought January 1, so that we can start before construction in the spring, getting everything moving um, so that people can start looking at properties around their communities if they want to invest in that property to then build a new home. This will give them the rest of the fall through the winter to kind of get everything in order here. Okay. I don't mean to be 50 questions. I'm just no, that's good. I, prefer, I like the questions. It's good. Yeah. It's a asking for money, so yeah, well, you should ask questions. I have a question to fellow supervisors. How will we pay for it? We have one point one million dollars in local option sales tax. I looked this morning. I think that would be a good place to utilize that. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Further discussion? Just to give you an idea of how fast you could get your money back on this, there's a house on Main Street right now that's in pretty bad shape. It assesses at three thousand dollars. So tearing that down and putting it in the house, I mean, again, your assessment's gonna go up really fast. Yeah, but in, so in the to get ten thousand back, it's gonna be pretty quick. Yeah, but but in the if it's in the city, then the city gets the majority of that property tax, not the county. You know, don't the city get what forty five percent maybe, and the county gets fifteen? So it's, it's going to take a long time for the county to recoup, mm -hmm. but the city will. That's why I thought the cities could have more of an incentive because mm -hmm. it's going to benefit them more than the county, you know. Yeah, but the county, yeah. I mean, it benefits the county, but the, yep. as far as the property tax goes, Mitchell County doesn't get, you know, 15% if it's in city limits. And the city will get the 45 percent, I think, and it something like that. But, but ballpark figure, kind of. I guess, truthfully, in my mind, <clears throat> being that the county is on board, I think the city should be on board for 50 percent of it. But that's my comment, and I'll leave that up for everybody else to have a thought on that. If, the, if there's going to be a 10,000 cap, I, the county should do 5,000, and the city, if it's in a city, should do 5,000. That's fun. Yeah, that'd be pretty difficult for uh, any some of the incorporated towns, like uh, I know Orchard is not going to be able to foot that. Uh, um, I think Mitchell's Mitchell, another. Yeah. I mean, they're, that's not really feasible for them. And I view it as far as it's going to be a... Uh, a good thing for the whole county in general and sometimes we just need to do things that are beneficial to some of the small towns. A lot of the small towns are actually the ones that have potential for a lot of infill lots. Um, Orchard and Mitchell, I'm not picking on them, but I'm sure they would love to have a better property tax base in their towns to 
generate more income in their towns. Mm -hmm. Carpenter too. Carpenter too. <coughs> McIntyre. This with yeah. the broadband going into Mitchell and hopefully in the near future Orchard and some of these houses get taken down and people working from home in today's working world, maybe they would utilize those uh, smaller towns. I'm going to interrupt. It's 9 o'clock. It is 9 o'clock. <laughs> we have to go back up to number six, public hearing to borrow $160,500. Dollars, and this is for the conservation to acquire the Dean Hoffman property. So, um, Adam, do you have anything to say? You need to open the public hearing. Okay. Open the public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, nine o'clock. Any oral or written comments? Any discussion? Supervisors, did you I have any none. oral Oops, sorry. or written comments? None. None. Rachel, did none. you? No. All right, then. We'll close the public hearing. I guess. Adam, did you have anything you wanted to add to this? I guess not that I haven't shared before. I guess got any questions. I guess it's uh, being rented right now. But yeah, I think we've got all the info on that. So, I guess moving on, we need to have motions to close it. Or close it. Have, do we have motions to, uh, uh, to a resolution to borrow this 160500 I'll move to approve re resolution 1107-21. Jim has made a motion to that effect. I'll second that. Mark has seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call. Steve? Aye. Todd? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mike? Aye. Jim? Aye. So there it is, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I guess Rachel, you'll have that at the end of the meeting for me to sign. Adam, no. okay. Moving back to the Mitchell County Economic Development Incentive Program. Keith, you had a, your hand up before we. Yes, I did. Uh, as far as cutting the uh, allotment of ten thousand and half and having the city meet it. Mainly because the city is going to have to put up infrastructure, uh, incentives for builders to be on that. You know, we already have programs that are in play now that is going to take some funding away from that type of thing. I would rather see that the county does get all on board at their 10000 And then she has already polled the cities to see if it would be possible for the councils to come up with something. You know, if you want to put a 50% matching on that, then that could be done too, I guess. But, uh, I think it would diminish the impact of what this can do if you do make that kind of uh, how should you say, stipulation on what you have with this money. Okay. I'll finish up kind of what I was also saying, which relates to that for some of these smaller towns. A lot of the smaller towns could, could actually be considered, a, we had this big thing of subdivisions, and a lot of subdivisions are getting built on the outskirts of some of these larger towns. I don't have a problem with people building subdivisions if that's where they want to live, but not everybody wants to live in St. Ansgar, Osage. Towns like Mitchell, Orchard, Carpenter, to me, are just prime for some people wanting to live not in a bigger town. Carpenter, they can uh, commute to Austin. McIntyre, they can commute to Rochester, Orchard, Charles City, Mason City. So I think those little towns are just gems that are waiting to be made right. And this is something that can help clean some of those little towns up. All right. Any 
any other comments or discussion? All right, it says action. So do we have any motions to approve doing this? I'll move to uh, approve. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to word this. I will move to approve. Yep, so that's what I'm trying to think yeah. of here on to say this. So I will move to approve uh, the Mitchell County Economic Development new incentive program of $10,000 to demolish existing homes and fund it using $100,000 from Mitchell County's local option sales tax fund. All right, Jim has made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Mark has seconded. Further discussion? Roll call. Mark? Aye. Jim? Aye. Mike? Aye. Todd? Aye. Steve? Nay. So it has passed. So. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Discussion and possible action regarding resolution 1032-19. And I think Shannon that's why you're here I uh, I put that on so I'll discuss that Provided you with three sheets, so I'll talk about it as we kind of go through the sheets. Um, we've had we get memos from the auditor in regards to stuff that's coming Jim, up. Do you have extra copies of the sheet? I do not. Um, you, I I can probably. Is it just the memo? No, there's two things. That's right. I can share that. I'll be all right. So. Uh, we get memos from the auditor, and uh, there's been some things on wellness. The wellness committee's put some information on the bottoms of those, reminding us about the wellness program that we've got. And uh, this last one had to do with reminding people that there was a resolution that was passed in previously that if you don't participate in the program, you are uh, charged $25 for the single plan or $50 for the family plan. To me, that's basically a fine. That's what I'm going to call it. In the second sheet, you'll see the physician's form that's required to be filled out when you get a physical. I don't have a problem getting a physical. I get a physical every year. What I do have a problem is uh, being fined if I don't want to provide personal health information. The information that's on there is HIPAA information, blood pressure, blood pressure, cholesterol, that type of stuff. If, if it was something as simple as my doctor just saying, yep, Jim had a physical, I'm good with that, but I don't, I don't need to pro be providing that other information and to be fined because I'm not willing to provide that information, I think is wrong. The last sheet is the resolution itself and uh, it shows on there, I just keep saying the word fine, but that's the way I view it, what you're fined if you don't participate in the program, and then there's also an incentive that is used if you do participate in the program. So I think the resolution is not in order. Personally, I want to nullify it. I think there's better ways to approach this. Um, want to redo a resolution that word is worded differently that's fine but the one that exists I don't like um, by by getting a premium reduction that's the incentive for people to participate and it should be a voluntary program not forced on people your thoughts all right <clears throat> so on page two that he gave you in the middle part, all that little fine print right there, above here, it says the information you're submitting will be shared in aggregate form with your company and for the sole purpose of administering well wellness programming. 
that's data collection. Um, <clears throat> it says that they're maintaining the confidentiality of personal identified information. We'll only re release personal information as permitted by law for the sole purpose of wellness programming administration and no time will your personal health information, which is HIPAA protected, H-I-P-P-A, Health Insurance Portability and Protection Act. Um, they do not disclose this stuff. I've been to the wellness meetings. It is aggregate. All it is is to give you a line of where we're at, where we were. It's baseline information. Um, that extra information is there because they do look at um, statistically where we were five years ago when they did it to now to see if data-wise if wellness is working. Um, the resolution was written and approved by the county attorney. This is a big discussion we had. This was following um, the first, the second paragraph, the last line. It says, after the AND in capital letters, we want all Mitchell County employees to be treated equally. That's because um, we do have this in the secondary roads contract. The, they agreed to this because they agreed that wellness was important. And so we incentivized it that way. Um, and the top, the second paragraph, or third paragraph is not a fine, it's a disincentive. You're in, we are incentivizing people to do the wellness program and the disincentive is to just, that they will have to pay. It is gonna cost the county for every point we do not get $8,000 in premiums per year. It's a disincentive. It's a fine. It's and a it's fee. approved. It's the same as the I let your you insurance talk. charges. I let you smokers. talk. I'm going to finish. Okay. I wasn't done talking, but go ahead. It's a disincentive. It's a fee. It's a charge. Mm -hmm. It's whatever you want to title it, but it's something that somebody has to pay if they don't provide they, if they don't provide their personal health information. And there's a federal HIPAA law that says I don't have to provide my health information. I don't care what those people do with it. Legally, I don't have to provide that, and they can write down whatever they want as far as how they don't share it or whatever. There's a reason they want it, and legally, I don't have to provide it. HIPAA is um, protected if it's specifically um, released that you could be identified specifically. It's not being released to the aggregate. It is a healthcare corporation that's using it, and HIPAA does, protects them from releasing it to other people. It doesn't protect them from getting it. Um, the wellness program, the background of the wellness program is you're asked to do in full participation in the past, five years ago, that meant a lot more. That meant you had to do um, those fun programs that we've been doing to try to get the employees the extra $25, like tracking your colorful food you're eating, um, the sleep schedule one, all that. You used to have to do all that to get us points. Now you're asked to do two things, to do the online assessment and the physical. The whole reason behind wellness is to help you help yourself. So the assessment, they ask you to do that because that gives you feedback. When you answer all those questions at the end of the completion, it advises you that, okay, we see that you're stressed out, so maybe you want to work on this pillar or that pillar. So it gives you feedback. <clears throat> Most people don't willingly go out and do that. You're not going to do an assessment unless you're asked to. Um, so it gives you feedback about, hey, we see this in your questions and your answers. Um, we think this will be good. You're not required to do that. You're just asked to do the assessment. Um, the physical, most people wouldn't go get their physical if they didn't have to. Um, the reason they're asking you to do that is so that you can get a repertoire with your physician, that they will get a baseline, which is a spot so they know you, they understand what you normally look like, what you're looking like at a good year. So that when you've had a cough for six weeks or something's been happening, and you come in cold, you haven't seen them for three, four years, they have no idea what your baseline looks like because you didn't come see them. So wellness is asking you to go in, just touch base with your doctor, find out where you are, maybe get early detection of something that's going on that you might not catch, but your blood work may. Um, early detection is gonna lower our insurance costs. That's wellness. Wellness is for you to get to know yourself and make yourself healthier, but it's also part of our insurance because it's proven to show if you do an assessment, get feedback, if you see your doctor and they know you and they do a couple tests, they might find something earlier that's going to save, the county's saving 40000 a year in uh, premiums, but we could save an awful lot more if someone has uh, diabetes and they get early detection, so they're not at the point where they've got neuropathy and can't feel on their feet and they have to have something, amputate or something, or it's got, they've got gangrene or something. It's all just getting you to know your doctor to get you in there and get you in the door so they understand what's going on. Um, 
we want most people get oil changes on their car, take care of their car. We're just asking you to take care of yourself as good as you do your vehicles, and to have a have a, a relationship with with a doctor, so that you aren't coming in cold to someone that you don't know. It will save the employees money. It makes them healthier. Hopefully, makes them happier, and it saves the county money and in insurance because then you don't have this big hiccup with a diagnosis that has gone on for a year and a half that nobody knew about, and now it's the treatment is really extreme because we could have maybe got him on a preventative medication ahead of time. We be in the insurance, not me, but I, I'm a big advocate of wellness. Um, this came back from a wellness meeting because another county was doing it, and um, the hardest part, as two-thirds, two-fifths of you know, is an employee, uh, the union members, is, is if the union agrees to it, it's pretty good, and then we can do it to the rest of the county. The big hurdle was getting the union to get on board with it because we can't turn around and force the union employees to do something normally. So the, the big hurdle was we presented it to the union. The union reps were okay with it. They understood it. And then once it was in the union contract, then we went forward with the resolution. And it was by county attorney. This he wasn't was thrilled, but he did approve it. Mark is of the same thought. Um, he did, he has fully participated this year, which is kind of funny because so, he's not going to play next year, but that's okay. So if you voluntarily provide that information, that's that you voluntarily provide it. Mm -hmm. You said that the wellness committee is asking people to get their physical. They're not. Yes, Mark. Um, how long ago did I approve that? 2019 was when we passed it, April 9th of 2019. It's a, it's a long time ago. It was right after I left the board. We did another one before that, and then we tweaked it to this one. And we aren't asking them to pay the money. You are the county is per the, the roads contract. They get the hundred and fifty a month, so they just aren't. Get, it will be taken out of the hundred fifty a month that they get to spend elsewhere. But the secondary roads has to get a physical because they need a DOT. The DOT physical. So they're going to have it every year. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy for them. About this HIPAA law. And that's probably off subject, but how come this vaccination isn't covered under the HIPAA law? What? It is. We require, our sign on our door says that we, um, if you've had your immunizations, they don't have to wear a mask, but it's on your honor. We can't require them to do HIPAA. And um, are you talking about the insurance where a company's going to charge them 100 bucks if they don't get HIPAA that they're talking about? Or, no, I'm talking or don't about get like the shot? nationwide, they're firing all, they're going to let all the teachers and, and uh, nurses go because they don't have their shots. Well, wouldn't that be covered under the HIPAA law? That's outside my realm. I just food for thought. It's That's like, it's like a, a saying a question C there. Yeah. Roads up department has to have a CDL. But I think if you don't get it, you'd lose your job. Yeah. Correct. Right. If you lose your CDL, you can't drive and do your job. And I, it's, it's each company on their own incentivizing the vaccination. So I don't know. But like I was saying, when people come in and they aren't wearing a mask, we can't ask them to see their HIPAA card because that's their, their, their immunization card because that we have no reason to know that as an employer there's certain things that you can ask to see yeah. um, we when I worked in the mental health department we had people come in ISAC had a group at that time that would come in and audit our books and they signed off that when they looked at charts they were part of a group you HIPAA says you can't release the information unless it's required to as part of doing business so if you're required to have someone to come in and audit your books they can look at the stuff. They just have to sign off. That was just a nationwide thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I businesses have the right, I suppose, because it would be part of the providing the care or insurance so, costs. So Mark started talking. I didn't, I didn't finish what I was saying. So you're not asking people to participate. You're more or less telling them that they have to participate because they're going to be fined if they don't participate. There's a fee that's charged. And that $25 and that $50 it's pretty much an arbitrary amount because let's just say, and we have 0% that are participating. There's a reason why we don't have a lot of people that are participating and we're right down to the end of the program. We, have, we got the wealth. So, so if, if we were to get the discount, 
there's a there's a dollar try to explain this is a dollar amount between what the discount is and what the full premium is why is it an arbitrary amount for the last few years of twenty five dollars and fifty dollars it should be based on what your savings is in the premium rather than just bam we're going to charge you this if you don't participate mm -hmm. well, and it, also if people did if you did have full participation and I refused to provide my health information on that form, I still get fined. I still have to pay. Even though we got the we got the benefit, the people that refused to put their health information down there still have to pay. So I don't like the whole thing the way it's worded. If you want to word a different if you want a different resolution, come up with something better, I probably would buy into it. You want to take that health information off of that form? I probably accept it. But I don't have to legally provide that information and I don't want to have to pay money because I've refused to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of people that think that same way. Maybe you should have it <clears throat> so you have an incentive to do it, but if you don't do it, then there's no... There is an incentive you get money. I, I know, but maybe you should just leave that part and take the fine part. You know, out of but it. isn't that but incentive, the money you get, that's what they don't get then if they don't do the program? So it's not really a fine. It's just you're not getting. Yeah, but well, you got to pay a monthly worded. premium. You got if you don't do it, you got to pay twenty five dollars a month or fifty for a family. Mm -hmm. But it's still part of your if you. It's money you're getting if you do the program. But if you don't do the program, you don't get that money. It, no, you get you, you get charged. You get charged if you don't do the if you program. Don't. You just don't get the money. The money's no. on the table. You just you, don't get it. You don't you get, get it. Charged. But you but don't it says get we'll it. pay a monthly premium cost share. It, and we've agreed that that money will come out of the $150 that the county gives every employee to put towards other. It's red. You, well, you get charged fund? for it. No. Or the the, they can put it into flex spending or they can put it towards your retirement, 125 a month. You get 166 a month. So if we remove the word charged and, and put in another word, then that would be okay? Yeah, I just don't like people getting getting people charged for that for not uh, participating. Because so that put in there will be a there will be a monthly reduction of your county. And it would still mean the same, Jim. Allocated. No, I don't. I don't want people to be charged, have a fee, have a rate, whatever you want the word to be, for not having to put that health information on that form. That's my big problem. And it's I don't, not I don't our want form. That. Well, I don't care whose form it is. It's not right. That's where, that's where I'm coming from. Well, it's kind of like property taxes. If there wasn't a penalty on October 1st, they'll be paid. And you'll get a lot of people come talk to you lately, so you know, because you get that always. It's like, well, why do I get charged a penalty? Well, if we didn't have a penalty, you no know, one would do it in time. Well, we that's, have budgets that's, to pay. that's not a very good analogy because property taxes are pretty much something that you have to do. Wellness program is something that an insurance company would like a county to do. The and county has agreed to do it. Pardon me? The county agrees to do it. And the county has agreed to do it. It's not a requirement by, it was an agreement and you just said that. Property taxes are pretty much a law. So that's, that's not a fair analogy. Well, there's an employer agreement to give the employees insurance. If they don't participate to give us a forty thousand dollar discount, then I feel that we can incentivize or disincentivize it. And it's your choice. In January, you guys can choose not to do wellness. I spend a lot of time doing it. So I guess truthfully, it is a choice. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that the wellness thing is is bad. The right. whole thing. Because there's forty thousand dollars on the table. If you just want to not do wellness and agree to spend forty thousand dollars on more insurance, and that's a guaranteed cost, we can do that as well. Which is could be the same thing as taking this out. Keith, did you have a comment? Yeah, I did. It sounds kind of a catch-22 thing here on this policy we're dealing with, that the whole idea of an incentive program to get somebody to take a physical is to know that your employees are cared for and are getting annual health um, inspection. Checkups. A check. Okay, so you do that, and your doctor's going to collect all this pertinent information. Well, the insurance company's saying, we're going to do better, and we're going to figure out where you are down the road. That's, that's not what I would want down to my information. The, the, 
company doesn't use that information for anything, then what do they need? Yeah, why do they There's use it? There's 22 counties, and they, they aggregate it for all the counties as a as a ISAC insurance. You might get more participation if they didn't have to, with, to relinquish that information. Everything in this country tells you not to give up your information because someone is going to buy it on the black market. You know, that, that information goes all over the place. I, I understand what you're saying, Jim, and, and I believe that people should have a physical when they're working for someone else and know where they are at, and it should be required that they do that. But they shouldn't have to give up their information to do it. That's my point. So if they go to a chiropractor that doesn't draw blood? That's your medical record. And they, and they sign that they're okay with that. That's all inclusive in the form. And you can go to ISAC and talk to them about it. I can give them feedback. I don't know what they would say. I don't care what they'd say. I don't, I don't like the form. I really don't care what they say. So why couldn't we just take it, and I know you, it's the wellness people are saying that, but let's just take this and, and fold this in half, take it to our doctor, and have our doctor sign it. If, if there's something wrong with me, my doctor's going to tell me, Todd, you, you got issues. Okay. That's for me to know. Okay. The doctor Let's has to sign that. And that's the only way to get credit. Why for not we'll take this off and just have the doctor sign here that we all got our phys or that I got my physical? It's not our form. I, you have to talk to Isaac about that. Well, then I want to remove the resolution because the I agree with what you just said and I what mean, Mr. Morgan said. And we're kind of getting away from this HIPAA law starts when we go into the doc. They're going to write our information. Then we come and we give this to you. There's another person that's seeing this. I don't see this. it. Yeah, the, that's the just insurance listen. sends it. And then the insurance gets to see it. And then they're going to pass it on to another. Again, I know that they're not supposed to give out names but just like he said it just keeps moving from one step to another step that human beings are seeing this information and I'm thinking that the HIPAA law is kind of getting like shunned aside I've only touched two of these because I, I never see them unless the person brings them to me they're supposed to give them to the provider and they send them in when, when our office our well, this never sees any of this. When you go to the doctor, TV. when you go to the doctor and have this uh, health information, the insurance company does not see that. The doctor sees that. That does not get shipped off to the insurance company. I used to think it did until I had talked with Dr. Ross's office one time, having to do with my boy, and they said, "Are you sure you want to send that in? Because they don't have that information right now." So, no, my health information does not go to the insurance company when I get a physical. The only time insurance company gets information like that is if it's part of your diagnosis, and they actually have to code it as a diagnosis in their billing, and then it's in your records. But they can treat anything as if they don't. And I only know that because my son never had asthma. He always had chronic recurrent bronchitis because Hageman would never give him an asthma dose, diagnosis. Everything was just that because once you have that label in your file, you never use it. Well, if you want to tear the, form, the bottom part of that form off, then I would be okay with it. And I know Shannon says that that can't happen. So I, I can send it to ISAC and ask them if they would reconsider the information, but that's it's not our form. But that won't happen for this end of the month, yeah. yeah. And you guys know the last two years I've requested to have this. This is what I came in last year and asked to have it waived because of COVID. We didn't do it the last two years because we waived it because of COVID. And that is on my plan to do it in January as well. Steve knows we talked about that in the meeting. We're yeah. going to send their resolution out, but we're, we're, we're planning on asking to have it waived because COVID has just made things crazy. It's hard to get into the doctor's office. It's hard to see people. Everybody's limiting their exposure. Although, argumentatively, that's one of the kickbacks now from COVID is that people are really far advanced in cancers and other things because they haven't gone in and gotten a preventative. So we won't lose our 40000 then if you waive it for COVID? We'll lose our 40000 because nobody's doing it. We've only got enough assessments to get 1% right now. You can't ask insurance company to waive it because you get COVID money? 
uh, they, but I don't that's know. Still the, that's the ISAC. That's not the insurance here. company. That's ISAC. And I think they've already taken away like those, all those extra things. They're not making us do all the paperwork and do all the extra programs. They weighted everything on assessments and physicals. That was their breadcrumb as far as COVID. We can waive the, the, the disincentive. That's our resolution. You, can, you guys have the power to do that. As far as the wellness participation, that's all on ISAC, and, and I think they've already given us the breadcrumb as far as they're not saying we didn't have to do um, like that sleep program that we passed out for everyone, and I can't remember the other one, the fruits and vegetables one. That was what they normally would have had us make, made us do for part of wellness, is to have participation in those things. We did those extra so people could get the $25 incentive from ISAC for a pillar. But ISAC is only looking at assessments and physicals this year, and that's the same thing they did last year because of COVID. So I, we have no control over the 40000 We agreed in January to participate. So, I mean, essentially, we're going to get charged what we normally would. We just, the Wellness Committee did a lot of work for nothing. How many do we need to get before the end of the month? Assessments are good. We have our 1% for assessments because I contacted personally one couple people and they did it. Physicals, um, I'd have to look. Do you know what our number was? No. Last time on physicals. Is there a way to check to verify the people that have done physicals? Yes, we get a list every month. Well, because there, I'm saying, so there's an employee upstairs that submitted it and it showed us them not doing it until Lindsay got involved. So I'm wondering, is there more of those that? And that's every month I give the list to the, um, every department has a representative on wellness. Mm -hmm. They get the list. They are supposed to be following up with the employees that aren't, haven't done their assessment, haven't done their physical. And hopefully if I was going to Todd and saying, hey, you haven't done your physical, can you get that scheduled before November 1st? He'd be like, well, I did it September 22nd. I've gone on credit. So it's if, if those people are getting contacted by their wellness representative, that should have come out. And we have had a couple of people that um, have had it faxed in and it was just in the float. It didn't get posted in a certain amount of time. So I do get emails every month when they go back and follow up. So but no, be that specific person. Mark, are you are you available? Mark Walk. He's there. He um, doesn't, you aren't very loud. So, one of two things: does a person have to nullify the entire resolution, or can a person nullify the disincentive portion out of the resolution? Thank you. I would propose that we don't take any action today because I assure you that January 1st I'm going to come in and ask this resolution be waived for the year. And then we can rediscuss it and I can talk to ISAC about if they can change the form. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. Fair? Yes. It would be for getting these people on board for the 40000 and then change it after the first of the year. Because I looked, we're at 37 physicals. And full disclosure, I just scheduled mine today because it's been crazy. Um, for 50%, we need 41 people. 60 um, would be in 45. So hopefully, um, everyone's on everyone to get those physicals done. 80% um, is where we get the four, So, and we have 82 contracts. So I had got that far in my calculator. So if, if one was, I mean, I had one done in February, so that would 
that would qualify, correct? It's just it's just, just that other stuff the on paper. there. I don't want yeah. to put on there. But. And you know what? Block it out and fax it in. Okay. How's that sound? I would take it, make a copy, and just black all that out and send it in. Well, I was going to take and it up there to him and say, fill this out, but then it, he needs to, it says he needs to complete all that information. So So if he does it and you have it, then just black it all out as long as you filled it out and, and there was something there. If they can't read it, that's their problem. Okay. Then we'll get credit for that one. We can argue the point later, and that'll, that'll dovetail into me requesting him to take it off. All right. So. Yep. I always like to try to work things out. Right. Yeah. So that would be on the table, and then because I assure you, we talked about it at Wellness that we're throwing that out there, trying to get people to do the physical, saying, "Hey, this is it." But we have no intent of not asking it to be waived again because COVID has us all in crisis still. So. Okay. So you can get with ISAC, see if they'll change. Your I'll phone. send this. I'll go back up and say, "This was part of our discussion today, and it's a real concern. And can we have these items removed?" And I'll send it to Brad. He is the one that he's. I'm not sure what his title is, but Brad is the one at ISAC that oversees the wellness program by Brad and Molly. So, yeah. But yeah, I would cross that out, Pax and Yeah, I would think the important part is getting a physical done, you know, so. Getting in there now, yeah. But like you said, a lot of the DO, a lot of the Rhodes guys are getting DOT physical, so it was easy peasy for them. Yeah, they had to. And I know they come in and they do their assessment. And like I said, at the end of the assessment, it gives you an email and feedback of, hey, you, you look like you're stressed or this or that, and these are pillars you could work on. It's not terribly invasive as far as the assessment. And I don't think any of us are here not saying we don't want to get a physical. We do, I get one every year. And, and, and I'd like to just be able to send a physician, send that to the wellness people that Todd Bryan has received his physical. Mm -hmm. And I know they just, they like to collect data. Um, do. I didn't go to the last one. I know it's on um, the table of whether or not wellness works and if the data is represented correctly or not, but I don't think we should give up forty thousand dollars in savings if we don't have to. Right. And that pays that pays for my <coughs> clerk's wages and then some, you know, yes, if you look at it overall for a department, the that's one person's of what we're doing here is in the savings of money. And yes, there's some pertinent questions here, but on the other hand, what are they going to be used against us? It doesn't go to insurance Our driving record with the sheriff's office is worse out than this. Or at least mine is. Yeah, I was going to say, let's. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, do we need a motion to table this then? No, is it possible action? Okay, possible. Okay. okay. I can and let we'll, it lie. We'll, we'll, All right. Yep. We'll we'll just it. put a tickler on your thing when I talk about the wellness contract. Or I'll know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Thank you. All right. Sliding on down, number 11, discussion and possible action on planning and zoning administrator's 90-day review. So our, uh, you could sit up there, I think. That'd be a good place for you. <laughs> our planning and zoning administrator, been here with us for 90 days she does a good job um, she is a department head one in one in the same as far as one employee plus the department head currently making $15 an hour at is it 30 hours full-time yeah 30, 30 full-time yep. 30 FD. and uh, that's not a lot of money to tell you the truth and so she's she's shown that she can do the job She's shown that she's willing to listen and learn things. I'd like to be able to bump that up, this 90-day review, uh, $2.50. So it would be $17.50 an hour. And then we could review it in June for the upcoming fiscal July if we decide to go further. But at this time, I'd like to bump it up to $2.50, so her rate would be $17.50. I'll second that. That was a motion. It can be, yeah. And Mark's a second. Brett, Jim, you're made the motion, yeah. and Mark is seconding. You bet. 
Any further discussion? Roll call. Jen? Aye. Mike? Oh. Aye. Mike? Aye. Todd? Aye. Steve? Aye. Thank Makes you. more money in a supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank we don't you. have to shovel, though. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, moving on down. Items of note. Meetings attended. Who would like to start today? Mike had a uh, conflict, so I attended one of his meetings. It was a Mitchell County Substance Abuse Coalition meeting, and uh, they brought up some brochures from other coalitions. I guess this one was the Allies for Substance Abuse. They brought these up, uh, brochures up to get ideas that this coalition could possibly use for their brochures. And uh, um, let's see here. They want to build a plan to focus services of five problems and direct a grant money to that direction. So that's kind of a direction they want to move towards. Find five things, problems, and direct their grant money to that in that direction. That's pretty much it. Mike, did you have another meeting? Yeah, I had a public health meeting. Uh, I kind of went over the COVID cases. So there's 59 active. This was last week. And they have a current census of 84 in their home health and uh, having trouble getting their iPad generation aids that they need for the new way of they're doing their charting or billing. So anyway, and going over their budgets and expenses and revenues and that's about it, I guess. So. Okay, I had none. I had none. I had none. <coughs> Moving on down, manure management plan updates. Rachel, do we have any of them today? Um, Mosier Ridge, 3022 400 Street, Riceville. DCI site, 3250 Kirkwood Avenue, Osage. And Merton Farms, 5082 Rainforest Avenue, McIntyre. Okay, thank you, Rachel. We're down to public comments. And Randy, you're the only one in here. Do you have anything to say? No. <laughs> Actually, I do. I want to thank you guys for passing as an economic development that I think Sherry's doing a good job. I think it will really be a good plan to try and get some housing and derelict houses um, down. So, thanks. All right, meeting is just about over with. Do we have any motions to adjourn the meeting? I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Right. Well, and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is over. Thank you.